All right, hi there, everyone. Welcome to uh, this post-game edition of uh, Believe in Bills. Uh, Adam Benini tonight, a uh, little, little family business in Northern California uh, tonight. Sal Mayorana is in the press box uh, at Highmark Stadium, as you would expect him to be after a dominating 47-10 win over the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, uh, and believe me, it, it resonates throughout all of football right now out here in Niner country. There's no question. The Bills kind of serving notice, I think, Sal, to some extent with this one. And I'll start off by asking a question. I mean, who's better, albeit we're talking September still, who's better in the NFL right now than the Buffalo Bills? Yeah, I mean, I wrote that in uh, in one of my stories that I've written tonight so far. They are 3-0. and There's only five teams in the NFL that are still 3-0. and And the Bills are clearly the best team of of that group. I mean, Minnesota might have the most legitimate argument, but Minnesota's got Sam Darnold at quarterback, and I'd take Josh Allen in a second over Sam Darnold. Everybody else is 3-0, and Adam. I mean, the Chiefs legitimately could be 0-3. I mean, they very easily could be 0-3. They've kind of done what the Chiefs do to get to 3-0. and The Steelers, does anybody believe in that 3-0 and team? Uh, the Seahawks are 3-0. and Come on. I mean, they beat nobody in three weeks, and there's one other that I'm forgetting right now, but they aren't as good as the Bills, Adam. <laughs> right now, the Bills, through three weeks, have been the best team in the NFL, both offensively and really defensively, despite the injuries. They've played great. Let's start on offense here, and Josh Allen's numbers, 23 of 30, 263 yards, four touchdowns, uh, no picks. Uh, just, I mean, they, they tried to play man <laughs> against him, and it's just not – it's not a good idea, um, but I mean, he's vaulted to the top of the MVP conversation right now, and justifiably so. Yeah, I mean, he played spectacular tonight, and you know, we we would talk, we had talked about the first two weeks how, you know, the passing numbers, really the passing numbers in the whole league, are down. But here at Buffalo, we're so used to seeing Allen put up three hundred, you know, three hundred forty yard games sometimes that it was a little stark that he only had three hundred seventy one yards in the first two games. And obviously one of those games, the Miami game, the game script dictated that they didn't need to throw the ball at all. But tonight they came in against the Jacksonville defense that clearly was going to be vulnerable against the pass. They were without one of their best corners, Tyson Campbell, their nickel corner, Darnell Savage was out. Um, you know, their, their safeties are okay, but nothing great. So the bills and they play a ton of man to man. That's just how they play defense. The Bills knew coming into this game, Adam, there were going to be areas that they could exploit. And, man, Joe Brady went right after those weaknesses from the very first drive, and you saw the result. They were five for five um, scoring touchdowns in the first half. It was starting to look like that Patriots game from the uh, 2021 playoffs, the perfect game. So, yeah, it was a spectacular game plan. And the other part of that, Adam, is you could have a great game plan but you got to execute and the bill is executed almost flawlessly. Well, I mean, let's talk about that passing game because we had questions about that leading into this one and we hadn't really seen explosiveness. And I think the longest ball Allen threw was 28 yards tonight. But I mean, look at the production, 10 different receivers uh, catch passes from him. Uh, Four different receivers catch touchdown passes from Allen. I mean, that is, they're just showing, yes, it's this everybody eats mentality, but they're very diverse and obviously very difficult to defend. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, this whole everybody eats, you know, it's a nice little catchphrase, but there is some truth. There, there is some truth in that because they don't have the standout wide receiver that a bunch of teams have. There's no Justin Jefferson here or, you know, name any guy in the NFL. There's no Stefan Diggs for that matter. But what the Bills have are a lot of pieces that are fitting into this puzzle, and Joe Brady is utilizing all of them. They all have a little bit of a different skill set. They bring something special to the offense. And, you know, Allen said after the game, there's not going to be a lot of days or nights when one guy is going to catch seven, eight, nine, ten passes. It's going to be a bunch of three and four catch games, but a lot of guys are going to have three or four catches throughout the night. And that wears a defense down when they can't just focus on two or three receivers, tight ends. The Bills keep rolling these guys in, in these different personnel groupings, and you lose track of how many guys they have as targets in the passing game. And that's clearly been the case this season, but particularly tonight. This was really the first night 
game, I should say, that they really took advantage of all their weapons. Curtis Samuel was involved. Um, Kincaid was involved. They got James Cook involved again. Everybody, everybody was literally eating in this game. Yeah, nice to see Dalton Kincaid early in the game involved and he gets in the end zone. That's important for this team moving forward. Absolutely. I mean, the play that I love the most was the one you referenced. The longest pass play of the night was a 28-yarder. Um, I believe that came on the third down play. And he just ran – he ran the kind of route. It was down the seam, and then he flared it out to the sideline. Allen threw a perfect ball. Adam, that's the play that I've been looking for from Dalton Kincaid. Right? That, that's what we were told when he was drafted in the first round. Those were the kind of plays he could make. And really, throughout his rookie season, and again, he was a rookie, so I get it. You know, he caught 73 passes, but could you even think of three or four that were truly impactful plays? They were a bunch of short little passes, catch the ball, get tackled. He wasn't running after the catch. And that play in the, in the, in the I think it was the first quarter, actually, that he got down the field, that's what I want to see more often from Kincaid. And then the touchdown was also – that was a terrific play because Allen bought time in the pocket. He was getting pressure. He was moving around. Kincaid was on that. That happened in our end of the field, Adam. And Kincaid was in the other third of the end zone on the left side offense. And he was able to get all the way across to the right third of the end zone. They lost track of him. Allen sees him through a beautiful ball. And Kincaid actually had to make a pretty good catch, too, because there was a defender getting closed in there. So it was just a terrific play. Those are the kind of things that I want to see from Dalton Kincaid more as they move forward. Now, we also had questions about this offensive line. Before we get to the defense, let's touch on that, because I think this group is really starting to answer them. Yeah, the offensive line played great again. I mean, look, Jacksonville's got a pretty good pass rusher, Josh Hines Allen, right? I mean, he's been a menace to the Bills in the last couple of games they've played against him. And they have a couple other guys. they got Eric Armstead from the 49ers, who was supposed to come in and be that other bookend edge rusher. You didn't hear anything from those guys all night. Yeah, there were a couple times where Allen was flushed out of the pocket or he had to buy time in the pocket, but they really did not even breathe near Allen. And that's two games in a row, Adam, because Miami never even got close to him. That game was played on grass last week. He didn't have a grass thing on his uniform. No, it was a tremendous game by the offensive line. I saw a stat that I think Pro Football Focus just tweeted out. Spencer Brown did not allow a pressure. I think it's two games in a row now. He's the other tackle, right? He's not the all-pro, <laughs> Deion right. Dawkins. He's the other guy. So, yeah, their offensive line has played great. And I got to imagine Mitch Morris is over on the other sideline saying, oh, damn, they, they don't miss me at all because they really don't. And with that pass rush, too, for Buffalo, now as we switch to uh, the defensive side of things, I mean, five sacks. They make it an absolutely miserable night for Trevor Lawrence. He settles down a little bit at the start of the second half. but And we had questioned at the start of the season, how impactful was Vaughn Miller going to be? Well, I think three games in and all three of the games, we're starting to see that from him. Yeah, Vaughn, uh, he got the sack on the – it was the fourth down play. Um, I think that was early fourth quarter. I mean, the game was is pretty much decided at that point. But he – if you watch the play, Adam – I forget who the tackle was. It was the right tackle. And I think it's the backup. So I think the starter had gotten hurt. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Miller, he just ran right by this dude. I mean, it wasn't even a contest. Lawrence had no chance. It was a fourth down play. And he had no chance to even look downfield. Miller was on him. He had to run out to the left. But Vaughn had the head start on him. And he just made the play. So it was a nice, nice sack for Vaughn Miller. That's three games, three sacks. I got to admit, Adam, I did not see that coming. I, I did not think that Von Miller was going to be having a sack a game in this 2024 season. And they're using him in the right way, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're using him about probably around one-third of the snaps on defense, which seems like the right number because they've got young guys on the edge with Epinesa and Russo. Those guys can be the bulk uh, snap guys, and they can bring Von Miller – into certain situations, and it's worked out to absolute perfection so far. Hey, it was nice to see uh, Javon Solomon and Casey Tuho, right? The fourth and fifth edge rushers each got a sack, and they combined on a sack fumble, right? Javon Seymour stripped the ball, Tuho recovered it, and Tuho had a sack of his own. So 
I mean, it was just a top to bottom dominating performance by the Bills and the Jaguars, who, by the way, Adam, are sitting at the airport in Buffalo. Their plane is having mechanical difficulty <laughs> and they can't leave the airport right now. So the night just keeps getting worse and worse for the Jaguars. But yeah, it was a it was quite a performance by the Bills defense. Yeah, certainly. And I mean, I think, you know, Sean McDermott and justifiably so is going to hear more in the way of praise about the depth they have on this football team, what they're able to do, what they've done in the secondary and the highlight for so many, certainly for me in watching this thing. I mean, to see DeMar Hamlin with his first career interception on Monday night football, um, yeah. of you know, Monday night, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and you think back to what happened in Cincinnati and how far he's come back. Uh, that was a kind of a profound moment. Really. Yeah, it was. And he, and he made reference in the, in the post game, they brought him to the, um, to the podium, him and Von Miller came down together actually. And it did come up that the last time he started in a Monday night game was Cincinnati, January 3rd, 2022. And that was quite a night for uh, the life of DeMar Hamlin. So it was kind of appropriate that he would get his first pick in a Monday night game. Uh, very cool, very cool aspect of this. Um, I thought it was also pretty funny, Adam, too, that the mop-up quarterback for the Jaguars was Mac Jones, the same Mac Jones who played in the playoff game when the Bills had the perfect game with, with the seven possessions, seven touchdowns. And it was all, kind of, all, all kinds of things were coming together uh, tonight here at Highmark Stadium. All right, so before we wrap it up here, uh, also want to mention, too, Keon Coleman gets in the end zone, the Bills' rookie wide receiver. Interesting that they had sat him for the first quarter because uh, of a being on time issue. Son, Sean McDermott trying to send a, a message there and nice to see him deal with that and then deliver, uh, run, ran a very nice pattern, very nice route to get open on his yeah. touchdown. So that's certainly a positive for this team. And now at Baltimore, at Houston, at the Jets. Uh, yeah. And that takes nothing away from what this Bills team has shown in, in the first three games. But I think we're going to really find some things out now. We've thought we've we've discovered a good number of things. I think this team has a lot of positives going for it that we've outlined here tonight and in, in, in the shows leading up to this. But now you're going to see them hit the road and have to deliver in that environment. In those yeah, and, and I mean, look, they are right now. They, they appear to be the best 3-0 and team in the league, the best team in the league, the way they've played so far. But we're going to see now. Now it gets really difficult. And, you know, I, I know I told you, Adam, on the show probably, and I've written this, when the season began, I really thought if the Bills could get off to a 3-3 three and three start in this six-game window to start the season, I thought that would be doing pretty well because it is a meat grinder that they have to go through. Now, we didn't realize that the Dolphins were just going to suck the way they did. That game was far easier. I picked the Dolphins to win that game, if you recall. Stupidly, I, I thought they were going to win. So I did not expect that to happen. I figured the Bills would win this game. But then when Jacksonville starts 0-2, I'm thinking, oh, man, that's a dangerous team. You know, an 0-2 playoff contender. I, we talked about it when Bucky was on the show. Those are the teams that are dangerous, right? Didn't matter. Tonight, the, the, Jag, right? what the Jaguars are instead, Adam, are a bad 0-3 team. That's what they turned out to be. But you get past these first three games, I was thinking two and one would be really good. But man, can they win two of the next three on the road against who's next? We got the Ravens, and then it's the then it's the Texans, then it's the then Jets. Then it's the Texans and then the Jets. Yeah. All That's three brutal. Other. Adam, that is that is a brutal road to go on. So now I've upgraded my status here. I'm thinking four and two is a real possibility. I think they I think they can get one of these games. And I'll be very surprised if they end up five and one or six and zero oh when this thing is over. How do you feel? What are you What are you thinking well, I, as you look at this? I think they're capable of beating. I agree with you. I mean, I think it's going to be. I mean, if you can get two of those three games, that is. I mean, you're doing extraordinarily well. But here's the thing. I think, given what they've shown, given the development we've seen from some of these players, certain aspects of this team, and with Josh Allen at quarterback. Um, and what we've seen from the defense, and hopefully they get you know get healthier and get a Taron Johnson back, for example, uh, for the Baltimore game, they're capable of winning any game they're in. Yeah. Um, and so I'm very optimistic, given the way, especially they took care of business. I mean, they did what they should tonight, but they're doing it in a way that suggests 
that early in the season, they've answered a lot of questions and kind of have their act together in, in, in some key aspects of how I they built this team. And, and, and what's really been impressive is the balance too, right? I mean, yeah. this is this really is a balanced team. There, there's been a couple years, well, several years actually, where it was the Josh Allen show. I mean, it all hinged on the way Allen played in these games. And I think really for the first time, Adam, it looks to me like it isn't all Josh Allen, right? He's get he's he's basically been the point guard so far, and he's letting a lot of other guys do some work for him. It isn't all on his shoulders. I mean, he ran six times tonight for 44. Five of those produced first down, so he is carrying a burden, as he always does. But it just feels to me, when I'm watching this game, that he's got more help this season, yeah. even without Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis. He It seems like he's got more guys that are rallying around him and doing their job, and it really has been spread out throughout the whole team. So that's, to me, what's most impressive about the 3-0 start is that it's coming from, from the whole roster is just contributing yeah. to this. Exactly. And that's what I mean by saying they've answered a lot of questions. Or It's only three games in, but those trends and what you're talking about uh, go a long way to answering those questions and show a lot of positive signs. So 47-10 to 10 is the uh, final score. Once again, Bills 3-0 and after a Monday night football win over the Jacksonville Jaguars for Sal Mayorana in Orchard Park. Uh, this is Adam Benini. Thank you for being with us here on Believe in Bills.